the Joe Rogan experience. What, if any, research have you done on artificial intelligence and robotics mm -hmm. and autonomous weapons and the, the future yeah. of warfare, which a lot of people think is going to be like what we're seeing now in Yemen with drones, that we're going to be seeing that with robots on the ground, and that this would be the future. Huge amount for the book that I wrote called The Pentagon's Brain. Mm -hmm. Really impactful moment was going to Los Alamos when I went there to meet a DARPA scientist who was working on an artificial brain for DARPA. I mean, this stuff is way... Artificial brain. Cr trying to create a system, you know, a free-thinking system. And what his name was Garrett Kenyon. What he told me was just utterly fascinating because, again, that human thing I'm always after is like, what are you doing? Uh -huh. I mean, leave the science, you've had lots of guys on here who will talk to you about the high technology elements. But I'm interested in who's doing that, who's creating that science and why. And he said to me, this is like – like where artificial intelligence is right now with scientists who are really looking into this, it's like Magellan, you know, <laughs> like mm. who will discover the new world? Right. But on the, on the idea of frightening artificial intelligence, he told me an, an interesting story about his daughter. And he said, um, people seem to think like, you know, facial recognition software is like telling us that we're one step away from AI, true AI. And he said, if, if he's, he was, he showed me on his iPhone, this was a couple of years ago, and he, how much trouble the iPhone had recognizing him, like if he put a hat on or if he made a funny face. And he said, my daughter can recognize me from across a baseball field, you know, if I have a hat on, just by the way I walk, mm. right? And he said, if she, if she couldn't, there would be something really wrong with her. In other words, her human recognition abilities are truly intelligent. And that is a system of systems, a biological system of systems that no scientist has, you know, the algorithm for which no one has ever able, been able to fi figure out yet. Mm. And he believes that we're far away from that. But the Defense Department, on the other hand, is moving us in that direction and absolutely wants autonomous weapons to be fighting wars. Look, there was a program that said, um, I quote this in the book, it says, the, um, the battle place is no place for humans. Whoa. So drones are the way of the future. <sighs> right, but they're used to kill people. <laughs> which, and, which also means yeah. that the enemy is creating drone systems. Sure. And yeah. pretty soon that's going to be a big, a big issue. Yeah, that's the, bi the big fear. The big fear is that they're going to be the first ones to implement it. I mean, what scares you about AI? Everything. DARPA thinks AI could help troops telepathically yeah. control mach machines. Of course they do. Right. And they probably can. I mean, they've already got cursors that people can move around that are paraplegic. They can move them around with their mind and their eyes. Yeah, I think there's going to be uh, quite a few of those things. What is they've this, already Jamie? made this thing. This is called the Synapse. This is uh, – <clears throat> I'll look, read this thing. That's the – DARPA-funded yeah. program to develop electronic neuromorphic machine technology that scales to biological levels. More simply stated, it is an attempt to build a new kind of computer with similar form and function to the mammalian brain. Such artificial brains would be used to build robots whose intelligence matches that of mice and cats. Jesus Christ. Robot cats. Robot cats coming to get us. Well, they created something called the the robo rat that was the first um bio hybrid right so a bio hybrid is when you mix a animal and a machine and darpa was doing that um right before 9 11 and people freaked out they were like you cannot put brain chips in rats and make them move through a maze by a you know remote control which is what they were doing and i interviewed the guys who were all working on this program before 9 11 and so the 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 morality of the of the citizenry was like no then 911 happened and suddenly all this money got pumped into DARPA to do anything they wanted the morality issue went out the window and they started creating all kinds of biohybrids as i write in the pentagon's brain so they put um they they now have pigeons that are mixed you know animal and machine what 
they created something called, there's a moth. So there's a Mandica sexta moth. That's what it's called. It's a large moth. And sci- DARPA scientists put brain chips into the larva, okay, so that when it cocooned and became a, a, a flying moth, it had the the chip built into its system, making it easier to integrate, and they could fly the moth around the lab. And that was a huge step. And this is now four years ago that I was interviewing these scientists. Did you, did you see any of this stuff? I didn't see the moth, but I, I told you I saw that the, the limb regeneration lab was a trip. And this is all... Spri- what was going on there? Well, they were just cutting limbs off of salamanders and watching the limbs grow back, right? And yeah. examining that and saying, well, if a salamander can do this, so can we one day. And I said to them, but wait, that's impossible, you know? And they said, well, it's not actually because humans have... They broke... I love scientists who break it down into terms I can understand. It's like what Elon Musk did, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Right? Cause, and they said to me, you were once a single cell in your mother's womb, and then you were two, and then you were, you know, right? Mm-hmm. So you can regenerate, and that's their premise. I mean, these are the top, the world's top scientists in regeneration. What is this, Jamie? It's the moth being stimulated by electrocurrents in its abdomen. So it's the uh, stimulation of the electrocurrents, they can cause it to go left or right? Is that it? Yeah, I was just looking up these biohybrid moths. What was the thing that you threw your hands in oh. your head like you were freaking out? Like uh, Macaulay Culkin and Home uh, Alone. This. He was I, reading something. He went, oh. Yeah, I typed in. What is it? I started typing yeah. biohybrid stuff, and this yeah. is the first thing that popped up was this uh, shrimp article. Yeah, yeah. it says through a, they're going to test them through Olympic-themed events. Oh, my God. Look at this. <laughs> DARPA MTO seeks innovative proposals for the development of micro to milli insect scale robotic technology. Shrimp. We're develop, we'll develop, okay. So shrimp is the... An acronym, an probably. Acronym. They, right. okay. they love an acronyms. Uh, we'll develop and demonstrate through a series of Olympic-themed events, multifunctional MM to CM scale robotic platforms. So I guess that's millimeter to centimeter scale. Robotic platforms with a focus on untethered mobility, maneuverability, and dexterity. To achieve this goal, shrimp will also provide foundational research in the area of micro actual actuator materials and ener- energy efficient power systems for extremely swap d- d- capital letter s capital level w lowercase a capital p constrained microbiotic systems it expected such advances will be enabling for applications including search and rescue yeah right search and rescue disaster relief yeah yeah, yeah we're gonna help people hazardous environment inspection or killing motherfuckers with a with an evil nuclear bee. <laughs> That's all you need. It's is always the search and rescue. A nuclear bee that goes yeah. in your mouth and blows up. Fuck. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, they do all kinds of planning for the future. Yeah. But the search and rescue thing is a it's a great sort of you know way in which to present DARPA as yes. doing all this great stuff. I interviewed. DARPA scientist who said, look, Annie, we've got, we're able to send robots into Fukushima to twist the... Cores. You know, right? Yeah. And, and yes, that is great, but that's far from the only thing yeah, it's being used for. Yeah, they're trying to kill for, people. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I but mean, here's a trip. You want to hear? I mean, sure. it gets... There are rabbit holes there because I sourced all these documents and also interviewed generals at the Pentagon who are like, we don't like... AI. We want like we want this. We want our guys on the ground. You know, mm-hmm. we they believe in the human, the warrior, that concept. And so the the generals were very opposed to it. The, the DARPA took a, a a vote, and it was like no AI. We want humans in the mix. And so what did DARPA start doing? And they oh the generals they said why don't you why can't we go more autonomous? And the answer was. We don't trust the machines, okay? So right around that same time, what did DARPA start doing? It started looking into and hiring scientists who were working with how trust works in the brain, specifically with what is called the moral molecule. And it's this molecule in the brain that mothers emit when they're breastfeeding. 
Okay. Oh, like oxytocin? Yes. So think about that. And I mean, that's like the ultimate going way back biology. Like you have to have a mother, a trusting mother to breastfeed in, you know, prehistory or otherwise you'd be eaten by, you'd be like, this is a bad idea. I'm mm -hmm. stopping to do this. I'm going to die. Right. Right. So they examined that molecule, the, the, the brain's moral molecule, and they began a program to work with that, to be able to give that to soldiers so that they're that they trusted AI machines. And that's where I think you're getting into really spooky, dark, multi levels of manipulation about what humans want versus what the Pentagon wants. Wow. The, the worry about trusting the machine scares the shit out of me because that's what everyone's worried yeah. about when it comes to AI. Like that's what Elon Musk keeps warning people about yeah. that. These things are going to have superhuman capabilities, and they're going to be sentient, and it's a matter of when. Absolutely. So I, I, as the journalist, said to myself, well, wait a minute. If the generals at the Pentagon, and I'm, you know, that's a, that's a euphemism, mm -hmm. but the, meaning that the actual, oper you know, the guys that are in charge here don't want that. Who does want this? Right. And where my research took me to was the group that wants that is what's called the Defense Science Board. And those are the individuals who are counseling the Pentagon in the manner in which they should proceed. And now those individuals are all sitting on the boards of the defense contractors. So you can really see how money drives the rubric. The generals don't want it. The humans don't want it. But guess who does? The people who stand to make the money creating the autonomous systems. And that's exactly what Eisenhower warned us of mm. in his farewell speech, you know, the military industrial complex. Yes. And the other part of that speech, which people don't, don't know as well, is that what he said, his antidote, Eisenhower said this, the antidote to the military industrial complex is an alert and knowledgeable citizenry. It's why I write my books, mm -hmm. because an alert and knowledgeable citizenry has the ability to kind of push back and go, but we don't want that. I think what we're worried about is Pandora's box, right, with it, when it comes to AI. And we're worried that, first of all, if we're not the ones to open it, what if they open it? All right? What if the Chinese open it? And, all, and the, obviously their technology is f super, super advanced. I mean, their electronic technology in particular, their cell phones are cutting edge. I mean, Apple and all these other companies are struggling to try to keep up with mm -hmm. Huawei and these 1FC or uh, one, um, what is the fucking 1ST? What is that one? What is that big company that uh, they just released some – they just hired Robert Downey Jr. to – they gave him millions of dollars to – OnePlus. One plus, plus, yeah. yeah, OnePlus 7. They have this uh, new phone that doesn't have a front-facing camera. You press mm. a button, it slides out of the top. They figured out a way to make it, the entire phone all screen. And they're incredibly advanced in terms of their electronics. We, we deeply are concerned – Mm -hmm. that they're going to be the ones that implement military, autonomous, sentient robotics before we do. Because then you can essentially, you can launch them with no physical human cost on your side. And, yeah. I mean, they, they, they're literally weapons of mass destruction if you have robots mm -hmm. that can go over there and just kill people. And, and what they need for that is the world's fastest supercomputer, yeah. right? And what's interesting is that we, ju we America, just overtook the Chinese in having, again, having the world's fastest supercomputer. But they mm -hmm. had it for a couple years. And think about this, okay? Because you were saying, hard to believe the Nazis were only, you know, not even, like, just in, just in our grandfather's mm -hmm. age, right? Yeah. So go back in time to then. Listen to this about – this really freaked me out in terms of progress, Right after the war, a guy called John von Neumann got a grant from the Atomic Energy Commission to essentially build the wor world's first computer. I mean, they existed, but he built the first computer that could actually do calculations, okay? Before that, calculations were done with, like, by calculators. Computers were humans. But there's this amazing story of von Neumann in the basement of the Princeton Institute for Advanced Study where he built this computer with government funds. And he, because he was a brilliant polymath, he could add faster than anyone around him. Okay, He's also the guy who calculated at what level the atomic bomb should explode over Hiroshima for the most blast. Okay, Because it didn't hit the ground, it wouldn't kill as many people. Right, So this is how his mind worked. So he's faster than the computer. He has a pen and paper in front of him, and he can outperform the world's fastest computer with his own brain. Two and a half years into it, in like 1949, 
the computer beats him. And he made a statement then that said, one day, artificially intelligent machines will be the ruin of man. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that was his prediction. But that was in 1949. In the 50s, Marshall McLuhan said that we are the sex organs of the machine world. I'm going to have to really think about that. That's a deep one. That is very deep. Yeah, that we are the propagators. We're the, we're the ones who are... We're your progenitors. Yeah, that's it. That's our baby. Yeah. We're going to mm-hmm. make that baby, mm-hmm. and then we're going to die. Most likely, that's going to be the new living thing. Who said that? Marshall McLuhan. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Just but, th- stop and think about that. Th- figuring that out in the 50s. Just looking around and going, oh. Right. We're giving birth to these things. But I have a question for you then on that morality issue, Right. Which is, if man has always been a warring animal, Mm. right, why do we look so down upon the throat, you know, the knife to the throat? And why do we as a society accept drone strikes? Because that's the whole question I ask in Surprise, Kill, Vanish, and I'm not sure I answered it to my own satisfaction because it's such a complicated question. Well, one of them is very personal. The other one is like a video game. You know, to, to stab someone, to look them in the eye and, and shove a knife through their ribs, mm-hmm. that's a, it takes a different kind of person, and we don't think we want that person around us. Interesting. You uh, think it's a proximity issue? Uh, it's, it's just different. You know, one of them is throwing a rock at someone that's nowhere near you. Okay. The other one is beating a guy to death when he's right in front of you. They're, they're, it's very personal. You see someone struggling, and we don't like to think that someone can put that aside and still twist that blade. Hmm. We don't want that. We don't want that on our side. We don't want our people to be noble and just. And But meanwhile, when it comes to civilian casualties, drones are one of the worst invention ever in human history. If we really want to examine ourselves in terms of efficacy and the moral moral high ground in terms of engagement like launching missiles at apartment buildings because you found metadata in there that indicates that most likely an al-qaeda operative has a cell phone in that building like that that's some shit that people have done i mean that has been done and the casualty rate for civilians when it comes to drone strikes for innocent civilians is stunning i think it's in the high 80 percent i think that's We've done this before, right? Haven't we? I think it's some it's it's a disturbing I might be conservative by saying it's in the 80s. It might be in the 90s. It's a disturbingly high number of people who died who were not the intended target. Right. Which would which would be an argument for that, the blade. For the blade. Yeah, the blade right? is you know who you're stabbing. And that that warrior is going in there aware that he too might die. What do you got, Jamie? What's that face? 3%? 3% what? That's what this says. That's horseshit. I know. Who released that? Maybe 3% accuracy. <laughs> no, yeah. I know there was, there's was been some serious know, discussions yeah. among scholars about this. Uh, yeah. That's not true. Whatever you're reading, that can't be right. Yeah. So Maybe just, it's one operation was 3%. Just to throw this out there, because there is that big debate. Of, I mean, CIA, paramilitary army, tiny, yeah. defense department, Huge CIA using either ground operators or drones. Mm -hmm. Defense Department, I read the statistic the other day, 7,200 and change bombs dropped on Afghanistan last year. I mean, people don't even realize we're still 7,000. Are are they just practicing? Here it goes. President Donald Trump revoked a requirement that U.S. intelligence officials publicly report the number of civilian kills in drone strikes and other attacks on terrorist targets outside of war zones. Oh, so we're going to get shit information now. But pull up 2017. 
as looking I don't know at that it might be gone. You now. have to know. find. Well, They're you got to really look hard to get that statistic. There's an inspector general who covers Afghanistan, right, for the government. He he looks at all the statistics. And by the way, this administration just canceled his job, so we will no longer have that information. Oh, Jesus. But he's the one that is in charge of reporting that because it's called the reconstruction effort, right? But <sighs> that number of bombs really makes you think long and hard, or at least me, about you know the big footprint. Yeah. versus the small um, operation. Um, and I, again, I think this is why most people don't want to talk about this because it's a dark rabbit hole to go down. You yeah, know? it really is. People prefer to believe that we're just safe and sound here and not not at risk. And, I mean, that's that's the endless question of are, are, these, are these threats real and must they be dealt with? 